After the last layer has been firmed up, what should be done if there is an excessive amount of concrete in the measurement? A. C172, standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. B. Add additional concrete to keep an excess of concrete above the top of the mold at all times. C. Remove a representative quantity of concrete with the scoop or trowel before the strike off. D. Lightweight, air cooled blast furnace slag or aggregates of high porosity. Use one stroke for every of top surface area when rotting a flexural strength test specimen. A. 1 inch. B. 1 8 inches. C. 6 inches. D. 2 in point 2. Every layer ought to occupy a round of the mold's volume. A. 1 fourth. B. 1 third. C. 1 half. D. 3 equal. Should vibration be used to solidify the concrete, a typical 4 by 8 inches? It is necessary to fill the cylinder mold in equal layers. A. C172. B. Wet sieved over a 112 inches. Sieve. C. 2. D. Wet sieved over a 1 inch. Sieve. Before starting any tests on a composite sample, certain portions of the sample must be fully blended. Is it true or false? A. True. B. False. What form does the rod's tamping end need to take? A. A pointed tip. B. A flat plane. C. Rounded to a hemispherical tip. D. The frustum of a cone. Which consolidation technique needs to be applied when the slump is less than one inch? A. Vibration. B. 9,000 vibrations per minute. C. Rotting. D. Rapid evaporation. What is the measuring bowl's minimum permitted volume that this test procedure uses? A. 28 L. B. 50 millimeters. C. 1 2 inches. D. 6 L. The concrete sample that will be used for the slump test needs to be obtained in compliance with ASTM standard. A. 0 0.75 inches. 1.50 inches. B. C172, standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. C. Removed by wet sieving the sample over 1.5 inches. Sieve. D. 258 inches. 618 inches. What is one reason, under ASDM C1064, to take a concrete's temperature? A. Very slump. B. Verify conformance. C. Verify ambient air temperature. D. None of the above. In any event, wait to get samples until A. One half of the water has been added. B. All the water and admixtures have been added to the concrete. 
C. 200 revolutions of the drum have been obtained. D. None of the above. To sample concrete from a track mixer's chute, do the following. A. Holding a shovel in the flow and direct half into a bucket. B. Raising chute to stop the flow and scoop concrete from there into the slump cone and cylinder molds. C. Passing a receptacle completely through the discharge steam or by completely diverting the discharge into the sample container. D. None of the above. Following the thermometer's insertion into the concrete. A. Cool the surface of concrete with water. B. Gently press concrete around the thermometer. C. Tap the side of the container 10 to 15 times. D. All of the above. Samples cannot be taken before the batch has been released or after. A. 20% or after 80%. B. 10% or after 90%. C. 20% or after 90%. D. None of the above. Begin testing for slump and air content within after sampling is finished. A. 15 minutes. B. 10 minutes. C. 2 and a half minutes. D. None of the above. It is important to elevate the droop cone cautiously, steadily, and vertically in seconds. A. 4 to 8. B. 2 to 6. C. 5 to 9. D. 3 to 7. As to ASDM C172, the duration between acquiring the initial and final parts of the composite sample cannot be greater than A. 20 minutes B. 10 minutes C. 30 minutes D. None of the above Samples of recent concrete that will be evaluated on the job site should come from A. Two or more regularly spaced intervals during discharge of the middle portion of the batch. B. The beginning of mixer discharge. C. The last concrete discharged. D. All of the above. The amount of time that has passed between when the slump cone is first filled and when it is removed shall not exceed. A. 212 minutes. B. 1 minute. C. 5 minutes. D. 15 minutes. The slump needs to be calculated to the closest. A. Half of an inch. B. Tenth of an inch. C. One inch. 
D. Quarter of an inch. Achieve success with American Concrete Institute certification. The American Concrete Institute certification is a prestigious credential that can propel your career in the concrete industry to new heights. Whether you are a construction professional or aspiring to enter the field, obtaining an ACI certification can open doors to exciting opportunities and demonstrate your expertise in concrete-related practices. By earning an ACI certification, you showcase your commitment to upholding industry standards and best practices, making you a valuable asset to employers and clients alike. This certification validates your knowledge and proficiency in using concrete materials, testing methods, construction practices, and more.